In this video, we're going to go through the different features of the ID Mixer that controls ID14. If you want information on a particular section of the ID Mixer, then go to the video description for the timestamps of the different sections. Simply put, the ID Mixer is the control center for your ID interface, enabling you to customize monitoring, functionality, and settings to make ID14 suit your workflow. The ID Mixer is made up of a few sections. The channel section displays your analog and digital inputs, as well as your door returns, or in other words, the audio coming back from your digital audio workstation or computer. The master section contains the Q mixers and the monitor controls. Then finally, you have the system panel, which enables you to control your routing and other settings. We will look at the routing options available in more detail later in this video. On a Mac, double click on the ID app in your application menu. This will create a menu bar item in the top right of your screen. The mixer window should then open so long as your unit is connected. If you close the mixer window, you can reopen it at any time by clicking on the ID icon and selecting Show Mixer. On Windows, click the ID app in the application menu. This will create an ID icon in the system tray. Right-clicking on this will allow you to open the mixer window and adjust ID14 settings such as sample rate and buffer size. So the channel section is what you will use to build up your main and queue mixes. These are terms from mixing consoles, where the main mix refers to a full mix that you, the engineer, would be listening to, and Q mix, which refers to separate customized mixes, typically used to send to artists when recording. Making use of the main and Q mixes on ID14 means you are able to create a completely separate headphone mix for the artist you're recording. There are three kinds of channels, mic channels, digital channels, and door returns. And these individual channel types can be hidden using these channel toggle buttons in the master section, just to help keep things tidy. The two mic channels show you the signal from the mic line and instrument input. The digital channels show any signal from the optical input, and the door returns display the audio coming back from your computer, where the ID14 output in your digital audio workstation will correspond to the door return channel. For example, output one and two will go to door one and two, and output three and four will go to door three and four. This will come in handy when sending out a separate artist mix. As you can see, each channel has a fader. Turning up a fader will send that channel to the physical outputs. By default, the door one and two outputs are turned up, which means that when ID14 is selected as your computer's sound device, you will be able to hear everything being played out of your computer. When you turn up one of the input channels, you are making use of the ultra low latency monitoring, meaning you can listen to your live inputs directly from the interface without your audio passing through your computer or audio software, which can sometimes cause audible and distracting delay. You can also use the pan control to balance the signal between the left and right sides in your speakers or headphones, so you can easily craft the perfect headphone mix. If you're using a stereo source, like miking up a piano or recording a stereo synth, you can press the stereo mono button to link the channels together, allowing you to adjust the left and right sides of your signal at the same time for a more consistent listening experience. At the top of each channel is the customizable channel name. You can double click on this and type the name that you want to help organize your mixer app. Once named, if you forget the input type or get a little lost in the mixer window, you can hover over the channel toggle buttons and the type of input will appear under the name. On the analog and digital input channels, a polarity reverse button can be found below the naming strip for dealing with phase issues caused from using multiple microphones. And on the mic channels, you have access to a plus 10 dB digital gain boost for boosting quiet sources. The solo and mute buttons allow you to quickly isolate channels, which can be useful if you want to check that a particular input is sounding good without any distraction from other sources. Finally, you have the meter. The meter displays the dBFS value, which is the level that comes into your computer. If the input is set too loud, the peak LED will light up, meaning you have clipped your converters and could end up with some bad sounding clipping distortion. We recommend setting your inputs so that at the loudest point, you are peaking at minus 12 dB. In the master section, you are able to toggle between different mixes, your main mix, typically used for your speaker output, and the cue mixes, generally used to create custom headphone mixes for artists you are recording. Simply click on the mix you want to edit and adjust the faders and pans on any of the channels you want to hear. If you want to preview the cue mix to hear what your artist will be hearing, you can hit the solo button in the cue window. You can also adjust the master level of the cue mix here too. The meters will show you the overall level of the cue and the chronometer along the bottom will show you the level over the last 20 seconds so you can see that audio is being sent and you can keep an eye out for clipping. Next, we have the monitor control functions. 
Here you have a number of different functions that can be used to help improve your workflow in the studio. The dim button will reduce the level of your outputs by a set amount. Useful if you want to have a quick word with someone in the studio without having to actually change the level you're wanting to listen to normally. Alt speaker will switch to use an alternate set of outputs. This can be configured in the system panel, but is typically used if you have two sets of speakers and want to quickly switch between them. The talkback button opens up a line of communication between the engineer and artist, either using one of the mic inputs on ID14, any mic connected to your computer, or even your computer's built-in mic input. This is configured in the system panel. The mono button will sum the stereo mix bus into a mono signal, which is useful for checking if your mix will sound good on mono sources. The polarity button will flip one side of the stereo field whilst also activating mono, using phase cancellation to cancel out the center of the signal and playing only the sides. This is a great way to get mix inspiration by moving center pan signals in existing records, or to check the sides of your own mixes and make sure that any reverbs and delay tails are sounding as good as they can. And finally, there are cuts for the speaker and headphone outputs. These can also be activated by selecting the output on the unit and then pressing the encoder. The system panel is where you can change most of the inner workings of ID14. On the left-hand side, you have the digital settings. Here, you can select the digital protocol you want to use for your digital input if you're using it, either ADAT or SPDIF. Below this is the preferred clocking source for when using the digital input. When using ID14 on its own, you can leave this set to internal. However, when expanding ID14 with a digital device, you will want to sync ID14 from that other unit so you can select digital one. If the indicator is red, then this means that there is no clock signal on that input. This could be because a cable isn't connected or the wrong digital protocol is being used. A yellow indicator shows that a valid clock signal is available, but the sample rate doesn't match the current sample rate of ID14. A green indicator means that a valid clock signal is present on that input and is the correct sample rate so you're ready to record. Below this is the mono mode, letting you adjust which output is used during mono summing, either the left or right speaker individually or both at the same time. This is followed by the ID button settings. This sets the function of the ID button on the unit. By default, it's set to scroll control, which enables you to use the hardware volume knob to control different software parameters. But when not using scroll control, you can set the ID button to any of ID14's monitor control functions. Finally, at the bottom, you have the trim controls, where you can adjust the amount the outputs are reduced by when you activate dim, and where you can adjust the level of your alt speaker outputs so they sound consistent when you switch speakers. And now we move on to the routing panel. The sources are displayed horizontally along the top, and the outputs are vertically on the left. To route the signal, click on the button that lines up with both the source and the destination you want. By default, the main mix is routed to outputs one and two, which means that everything you have turned up in the main mix will be sent to your main speaker outputs one and two. The second set of line outputs are set to alt speaker by default, which means that when you press the alt speaker button, this output will switch to play your main mix. By default, the headphones are set to main mix, playing exactly the same thing that comes out of your speaker outputs. However, if you have built a low latency monitoring mix for an artist on one of the Q mixes and you want to send it to the headphones, you would select the Q mix you want for the headphone output. Door through allows you to directly route signal from your door to a physical output, bypassing all routing and volume controls. This is useful if you have a separate monitor controller, for example. You need to be careful when using door through because it will send full volume audio to your outputs. And if you have your speakers connected, this might not be very pleasant and it could damage your speakers. You'll get a warning explaining this every time you try and select it, just in case you press it by mistake. The other tab in the routing panel is the talkback tab, where you can select the input that you'll be using for your talkback source. This is your way of staying in contact with an artist by speaking directly into their headphones. Here you have the option to use one of ID14's inputs, whether analog or digital, or you're able to use an external source, which could be your computer's built-in mic or even a USB microphone. When a talkback source is selected, that channel will change into a talkback channel in the ID mixer window. Any external source will replace the door return six channel. A talkback channel can be identified by its solo and mute channels changing into a talkback button, which will trigger the talkback. By default, the talkback channel will be routed to both the Q mixes, ready to be sent to your artist's headphones. Once you've set up the ID mixer just how you want it, you can save it as a preset, so you can quickly recall all your settings. To save a current setup, simply go to File and then click Save. 
You can now give the configuration a name to remember it by and click save. You can also export the configuration to send to friends or collaborators or to store along your project. To recall the preset, simply go to file and then click open. A list of your previously saved presets will appear. Choose the one you wish and click load. The mixer will now change to that particular preset. We hope this video has given you an idea of the capabilities and the powerful features of the ID mixer and that you find it a useful tool to add to your workflow. If you have any questions at all about how ID14 or the ID app works, then please leave a comment or get in touch with our support team. And don't forget to subscribe to keep up to date with audience related news and products.